Okay, so welcome to chapter 18. In the chapter 18, we talk about the alternating current circuits. We often denote the alternating current as AC. So the next moment you see the word AC, you know it's referring to alternating current. In the first video, we will talk about the introduction about the alternating current circuits. And then I will also show you how to get the formula root mean square value equal to the amplitude divided by square root 2. In the second video, we will learn how to look at the phasor diagram. In the third video, we will talk about the alternating current through a resistor, alternating current through an inductor, and alternating current through a capacitor, respectively. And then in the fourth video, it is about the Q&A of this section. In the fifth video, we talk about the RL series alternating current circuit. R means resistor, L means inductor, C means capacitor. So you learn about the resistor and inductor in a series. You also learn about the resistor and capacitor in a series. And finally, you also learn about all the resistor, capacitor, and inductor in a series alternating circuit. And then in the six videos is about the, the Q&A of this part. Okay, so now let's begin the introduction. In the examination, if you are asked to differentiate between the direct current and the alternating current, this would be your answer. A direct current is a current in which the direction of the current is always the same. An alternating current is the current in which the direction of the current changes or reverses periodically. So in a direct current, normally you use a battery. And then in the alternating current, you use this sign to denote the alternating current source. Okay. This is a direct current of constant magnitude. This is a direct current of, vari of variable magnitude. That means that they are still direct current, but their magnitude changes and never reverse the current direction. That means that the current still has positive value. It never becomes negative value of the current. However, for, for the alternating current, the value can get positive or negative. For example, if you were given that the, the voltage of the source is to be of sine function, then it should be like this. If the voltage is of cosine function, then it's like this. So you see, this is the VT graph. When the voltage makes a complete oscillation, the time taken is a period. That means that one period is equal to the time taken for alternating current to complete one oscillation. Then this is the peak value, which is V0. Peak to peak value is 2v0. Alright, peak to peak value is the difference in between the top and bottom of the graph. Now I need to show you the root mean square value is equal to the amplitude divided by square root 2. 1 over square root 2 is equal to 0 0.707. So root mean square value is here. For the alternating current, you have both positive and negative value. But then for the direct current, you only have positive value. Okay, before I want to prove that the VRMS equal to V0 over square root 2, you need to know what does the root mean square value mean. 
Okay, remember that let's say you are in a statistic class, you were given five observations. S1 equal to 0, S2 equal to 1, S3 equal to 3, S4 equal to 7, S5 equal to 98. And then you are asked to find the root mean square value of the theta. The root mean square value of the theta is like this. Root mean square 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 square. Okay, this is the root mean square value of the theta. By referring to the name, you already remember the formula of this. So this is a discrete theta. For the discrete theta, you use the formula like this. Root mean square value equal to square root the summation of all the square value divided by the average by the all number of theta. N is the number of observations. However, this is for discrete theta only. For the alternating current, normally you were given the sinusoidal function. That means that it is a continuous theta. So for the continuous theta, you need to use the integration sign instead of the summation sign. So let's say in the examination, you are asked to give the definition for the root mean square value of the alternating current, then this should be your answer. Root mean square value of an alternating current is equal to the value of a constant direct current which can produce the same heating power as the alternating current in a given resistor. If you are asked to give the definition of the root mean square voltage, then your answer becomes the root mean square voltage of an alternating current is equal to the value of a constant direct current voltage which can produce the same heating power as the alternating current in a given resistor. So remember this formula because we are going to use this formula right now. Okay, so let's say the source voltage is given as this function. You need to prove root mean square value equal to V0 over square root 2. You need to use this formula. So now we have to find the value of this term first. So we now find the value of this term. You substitute the V square. You substitute the V into the V square. When you are doing this integration, you know that V naught square is a constant. So you can get the constant out of the integration. You want to integrate sine square function. Then you use the formula of cos 2 theta equal to 1 minus 2 sine square theta. So you substitute theta equal to omega t. Then you know that sine square omega t equal to this term. And then you substitute this term inside the integration. Then you can do your powerful integration. Remember that the limit of the integration is from when time equal to 0 until time equal to 1 period. Then you do your integration until here. Omega is the angular frequency which is equal to 2 pi f which is equal to 2 pi over t. So you substitute omega equal to 2 pi t inside. Then this is sine 4 pi. What is the value of sine 4 pi please? It is 0 because sine 0 equal to sine 2 pi radian equal to sine 4 pi radian equal to sine 6 pi radian equal to 0. So you know that the final value of this term is this. Then you substitute inside. Then you can prove that root mean square value equal to V0 over square root 2 successfully. Okay, remember that I do this derivation when the voltage supply is given in this form. What if the voltage supply is given in the cos cosine function? Okay, so now you want to prove root mean square value equal to V0 over square root 2 when the given voltage function is cosine function. 
okay you still do your integration but then this time just now we use cos 2 theta equal to 1 minus 2 sine square theta now we want to use cos 2 theta equal to 2 cos square theta minus 1 then you substitute everything inside and then you also do your integration and then substitute for the omega equal to 2 pi over t then you can find some some terms equal to 0 then ultimately you still get this value so you still can prove that root mean square value of the voltage is equal to the amplitude of the voltage divided by square root 2 okay now in some textbooks we straight away use the mean square value of the sine square. That means that you are given voltage source to be in this form. Then you square it up. Then you get the mean value of them. Remember, uh, this bracket means mean value. So mean value of v naught square sine square theta is equal to v naught square times the mean value of the sine square theta. And then what is the mean value of the sine square theta, please? It is equal to half. How do you know? We do this integration. When I want to know the mean value of the sine square theta, I have to integrate it in one cycle, then divided by 2 pi. Okay, so this is how I get the mean value of sine square theta equal to half. Then you still can prove that root mean square value is equal to the square root of this whole term of this mean square value of an alternating voltage. Then you still can prove this formula. If you were given this function, you you still do the same procedure as here okay you do the mean value of the cos square theta you find the value of the mean value of cos square theta equal to half and then you substitute here and then you still can get the root mean square value equal to v naught over square root 2 so now we do a question okay the output of an alternating current supply is V equal to 30 sine 6000 T. Okay, when you are given this form, you know that V equal to V naught sine omega T. So V naught is equal to 30 volts because it states that V is in volts and then T is in seconds. Okay, please find the maximum voltage. Maximum voltage is v not 30 volt please find the root mean square voltage just now you have already learned that v rms equal to v not over square root 2 the root mean square voltage equal to the peak voltage divided by square root 2 then you still can then you still get this v rms equal to 21.21 volt please find the frequency of the current supply v equal to 30 sine 6000 t and then you know v equal to v naught sine 2 pi f t then you know 6000 is equal to 2 pi f then you can get the frequency is equal to 955 hertz please find the period 2 pi over t is equal to omega and then omega is equal to 6 thousand okay sine omega t sine six thousand t you know that omega equal to six thousand equal to two pi over t equal to two pi f then you can get the t equal to 1.05 times 10 power negative three second you can also use the formula that means that frequency equal to one over period then period equal to one over frequency then 1 over 955 is equal to this value. Please find the angular frequency of the current supply. The angular frequency is this one. But then you remember that the unit for the angular frequency is radian per second. The unit for the frequency is hertz, which is per second. Please find the peak to peak value. Peak to peak value equal to 2 V naught equal to 60 volt. Please find the number of oscillations per second. 
Okay, the definition for the frequency is number of oscillations per second. So if you get 955 hertz, then you can say that there are 955 oscillations per second. Please find the value of voltage of a direct current that will produce the same heating effect as the alternating current. This sounds familiar, right? This is exactly the definition for the root mean square voltage. So if you get root mean square voltage equal to 21.21 volt, this should be your answer. Okay, so now, hopefully after this video, you can memorize root mean square voltage equal to peak voltage divided by square root 2. Root mean square current equal to peak current divided by square root 2. Okay, I really need to remind you that when you are using the root mean square value equal to the peak value divided by square root 2, this formula is only valid for the sinusoidal function only. That means that it is only valid for positive or negative sine or cosine function only. Because you are actually deriving all this from the sinusoidal function. Alright, so that means that you can only use the formulas for the sinusoidal function only. That means that you cannot use those formula for this type of graph because they are not sinusoidal. So if this is not sinusoidal, then definitely you cannot use the formula VRMS equal to V0 divided by square root 2 and the RMS equal to I0 divided by square root 2. They are only varied for the sinusoidal function only. Okay? Okay, so in the following video, we will talk about the phaser diagram. Thank you.